Hey, what's up? Alex here. This video is going to be answering all the questions that you have submitted in my YouTube post a week ago. The reason why I want to do this is because moving ahead, I probably won't have too much time to read and respond to all your comments. So hopefully this Q&A video will help. First question, what is generally the sequence for renovation? There isn't a very strict sequence, basically works that is going to be very massive, that will make the place like super dirty, those kind will go first. For example, hacking works, uh, if you are doing floor ceiling, partition walls, electrical wiring, uh, aircon piping, these will go first. Then it can follow with tiling, any glass or aluminum works, do up the flooring and walls, painting, nearer to the end will be carpentry works and plumbing works to install all the toilet fittings then electrician come in again to install the lights. There is a lot of sub-questions packed into this question about renovation. What's your bare minimum for a first house? It depends on how old are you at the time and also your financial capability. Uh, let's say if you are like an average Singaporean getting your BTO around in your mid to late 20s, I would say 20 to 30k. Sell away once it reaches MOP, upgrade or move to a place that makes more sense for you at the time. For example, nearer to the schools that you want your kids to go or just nearer to your workplace. That next house, then you spend more on the renovation. But personally, I wouldn't spend more than like 80k on renovation because I would rather take that extra money to put into investment. So for minimum, you can opt in for all the HDB default stuff. Do carpentry for kitchen cabinets, bedroom wardrobe is a must in my opinion. As for the things to splurge, I will splurge on getting a good mattress. The rest of the things you can probably make do. For a budget home gym setup, that really depends on what type of exercise and workout you like to do. For me, getting a bench top, a squat rack and some weights will do. Do you recommend to DIY smart home or hire professional? What's the difference? Actually, I got asked this quite a lot in my other videos. My take is, it depends on what type of smart home platforms you are looking for. Before many of the smart home devices that you see now become so accessible, you have those traditional smart home systems like CBUS, Control4, Creston. So these are usually targeting the luxury homes or hotels. I remember seeing one property Lim Brothers video where they showcase a house with the Creston smart home system setup. So this kind will consist of many things, not just only smart lightings. You have built-in sensors everywhere. Uh, home network and security, an audio system for the entire house, then you have those control panels fixed on the wall everywhere. So if you're going for this kind of solutions, then engage a company. But if you're engaging a company that is just providing some Tuya smart light switches, some R blasters and a couple of Google smart speakers, if that's all you want, I would say just DIY yourself because you don't need a professional to do it. At most, just an electrician to help you wire those light switches which you are going to engage one anyway for your home renovation. So just Google for guides a little bit. It's really very simple to set up a Google Home, Apple Home Kit or Samsung SmartThings discount solutions. So just nice, I have a few questions on SmartThings. How do I connect Xiaomi slash Akara to SmartThings? For the switches and sensors, uh, it's just uploading the device handler. If you have the Akara Magic Cube, then it's a little more tricky because you will need to make use of smart apps like the web call. But okay, I promise I will do like a step-by-step -step tutorial guide to show the connectivity and integration. But I have a couple of videos that I like to do first, so this will come after that. Can you show us Xiaomi Digital Log features and how do I connect it to SmartThings? SmartThings only supports some lock models from Samsung and AIL, doesn't support my Xiaomi lock. If I know that I'll be using the SmartThings solution from the start, I'll most likely get a compatible supported lock in SmartThings rather than the Xiaomi door lock. Okay, last series of questions on smart home. Do all Akara devices work with Xiaomi Hub? Likewise, do all Xiaomi sensors work with Akara Hubs? No, they don't. Some Akara devices, typically the newer ones, doesn't work with Xiaomi Hub. Um, and none of the Xiaomi sensors work with the Akara Hub. Which Akara or Xiaomi Hub is more future-proof? Or should I just forgo both hubs and get a SmartThings Hub instead? I will recommend getting a SmartThings Hub because it is a lot easier to do automation across multiple brands of smart home products. But if it's just between Xiaomi or Akara, I will recommend the Akara M2 Hub and hooking up to Amazon Alexa because their routines are much better than Google. Okay, finally a fun question. Are you excited about EPL this year? Yes, I am. I think for this season, the four obvious teams, City, Man U, Chelsea and Liverpool are all competing for the title. 
I will also most likely watch more menu matches this season because CR7 is back. I think overall this is very good for the league. Where can I buy the Tinego Floor S3? You can buy it from Shopee, they have an official store there. Airbot and DBL Vacuum Review. Provided that they are willing to send me their product and they are okay if I were to give a negative review. Not many companies are okay with that. Okay, here are some comments for video suggestions. If it is in my area of interest and if I have good video idea, then I will do it. I don't do like a single product review type of video because I think it's not very interesting to watch. How did your journey in home renovation, smart homes and tech come about? You sure appear to be more than an average Singaporean in terms of knowledge and skills. I don't think I really shared anything very technical about renovation stuff. It's just me sharing my experience after going through the renovation process for a few times already. So yeah, I'm not young, this is not my first house. As for smart home, that is an interest that I picked up over the past year. And probably because I'm working in the tech industry, specifically in the enterprise software automation. So that interest and work kind of gels very well together. For tech in general, it's an interest since young. I used to work at Cyberactive during my schooling days, you know, building PC and helping to fix computers or this. You will know that shop if you are from my generation. <laughs> are you going to be a full-time YouTuber? Short answer is no, I'm just doing this YouTube thing for fun during my free time. But this is really not easy, especially for a one-man show like me. From planning, to scripting, to shooting, to editing. Then you will also start to have more expectations in your videos in terms of content and quality. The amount of time and effort put in hardly justify the monetary gain. So I'm just treating YouTube as a fun hobby since I also enjoy sharing my knowledge and seeing people benefit from them. This is the last question which comes nicely to the end of this video. Can you share some of your smart routines or share some creative uses for smart plugs? I think my usage is very normal, nothing creative. My next video is going to be a complete full smart home tour of what automations and smart home products I'm currently using. That requires quite a lot of effort to do, so that's why this video is kept short and rather easy to do. So stay tuned for the next one. So that's all of your questions and comments. Thanks to those that have submitted your questions for this video. Once again, thank you everyone for watching. Bye.